Bona tarda, good afternoon. It's quite hot here. Do you mind if I take my jacket off? If uh, in one year from now, someone asks you if Luis Bassat took his jacket off before his speech, probably most of you won't remember it. But if I ask you again, do you mind if I take my jacket off, and you don't mind, and I do like that. Very probably, you will remember that I took my jacket off. That's the big difference between great advertising and gray advertising. I'm going to talk to you about creativity. But let me start showing to you what and how uh, I became part of this world. When I was 12 years old, my parents took me to a movie theater, and I saw a film called 13 by the Dozen. In this film, the protagonist was uh, a father of 12 children, and uh, he used to work in one car company. And he decided to use in his house the same systems as, as he used at the car company in order to improve not only the education of uh, their children, but also the effectivity of all the decisions that they were taking at home. Let me show you the few seconds that changed my life. And in these experiments, large or small, mother was always at his side, a partner in every enterprise. Stop. How long was that? Seven seconds. Good. Now we'll do it the other way. Ready? Go. This man was challenging everything in his home, even the way that he used his vest. Doing in a normal way, from the top to the bottom, took him seven seconds. From the bottom to the top, a strange way of uh, using or recording their uh, vest, only five seconds and a half. That day, and I was 12 years old, I decided to challenge everything that was done in my home. I used to ask my mother, <coughs> why are you doing things like that? And her answer was always, because my mother did like that. And to me, that was not the, the right answer. I would like to, <coughs> I apologize, to try to define creativity. And in order to do that, I will use some images. Let me show you the first one. to 1964 that a crazy man called Dick Fosbury at the Olympic Games of Mexico decided to do it in a very different way. Instead of jumping like everybody else, he jumped backwards. I was watching those games and I thought, this man is going to, to break his back, but he didn't. And not only he didn't break his back, but he jumped higher than anybody else. Let's see it. will imagine that he jumped backwards, and he did. And to me, that's a fantastic example of what creativity is. Because he, he did three things that are crucial in creativity. The first one, he did something original, different. 
creativity is doing something original, different. And he did. He jumped backwards. But if doing something different, he could jump only half meter, he would be remembered as that strange, extravagant jump uh, athlete in Mexico. The second condition is to do it better, to do it differently and better. And he did better because he jumped higher than anybody else and won the gold medal. But he could do that because an exceptional condition of his body. And that would be remembered as the exception. No, no. He was a normal person. And everybody else that had to jump after him in order to arrive to his height had to jump like him. So his way of doing, his new way of doing, became the standard, the normal way of doing. Do something different, different, do it better, and convert that way of doing in the standard, in the normal way of doing from that day on. Three years before the Olympic Games, the mayor of Barcelona, Pascual Maragall, called me and asked me to pitch for the opening and closing ceremonies. And I said, Pascual, no, thank you very much. I've seen one Olympic ceremony and was awful. I can do the advertising for the Olympic Games if you want. And he answered in a very clever way. He said, no, I'm not going to do advertising for the Olympic Games, but you can do a ceremony that can change the image of Barcelona, Catalonia, and Spain. So he persuaded me with that idea, and I decided to pitch for the opening and closing ceremonies, putting my, all my effort in converting those three hours and a half in a three hours and a half commercial for Barcelona, Catalonia, and Spain. One famous person of the show business told me that in any show, if there is no risk, there is no emotion. So we decided to, to take a risk. In the most important moment of the ceremony, to light the torch with an arch and an arrow. Oof. When I had to accept the idea, and I accepted, I said, OK, we'll work on that idea, but I want to see the archer to launch the arrow 1,000 times and succeed the 1,000 times. I cannot, I cannot imagine that uh, he doesn't succeed. It would be a disaster. It would be a very bad image for Barcelona, Catalonia, and Spain. So we recircle, we recircle 1,000 times, and, and we did. And you are going to see those few moments, these short moments of the opening ceremony of the Barcelona Olympic Games. You will see after that that I used very famous singers. At that time, in 1992, Spain didn't have a worldwide famous singer. Maybe Julio Iglesias, but that was it. And then I thought, how can I put music in that ceremony? I want to, to show that we are a good country. We, we have very good musicians. And suddenly I realized that maybe not in pop music, but in opera, we had great singers. Placido Domingo, Montserrat Caballé, Jose Carreras, uh, Jaume Aragall, uh, Pons, Teresa de Berganza. So for the first time in history, we did opera in one opening ceremony. Let's see the arch, the arrow, and the singers.
Creativity in advertising is infinite. You can do thousands of different ways to sell a product or to build a brand. But in fact, there are no more than 20 basic creative paths. I'm going, I'm going to show you six this afternoon, the six that I consider probably the most important ones. And the first one is the one you just saw. Popular people, famous people, famous testimonials. A, testimo a famous testimonial gives you a lot more. Um, you remember much more the, the campaign if the campaign uses a famous testimonial than if you don't. The proof is that 22 years ago, 22 years ago, uh, the government of Catalonia asked me to make a campaign to convince young people not to smoke or to stop smoking. And a few months before, Johan Cruyff, the famous football player and coach of the Barcelona football team, had a heart attack because his habit of uh, tobacco, smoking too much. I asked him to do the campaign for us, he accepted, and I asked him to, do, to say exactly that. I'm Johan Cruyff. I had two vices in my life, smoking and playing football. Football has given me everything in my life, and smoke almost killed me. That's the commercial. Soy Johan Cruyff y mi vida he tenido dos grandes vicios, fumar y jugar al fútbol. El fútbol me ha dado todo en la vida. En cambio, fumar casi me lo quita. Every time a journalist interviews me, I know that one of the questions is going to be, what do you think about sex in advertising? And my answer is always the same. Uh, you can use sex badly. For instance, if you put an almost nude girl on the hood of a car, uh, it's a bad idea. Because very probably the people will look at the girl and not at the car. And you try to sell the car. But sex can be used in a more clever way because it's something so common, so normal in the civilization is something that we do often, and millions and millions and millions of people are familiar with sex. So sex is a good creative path because it's a good thing for the human being. But you have to use very carefully and with uh, some intelligence. One commercial. <laughs> As I said, sex is something used many, many times for many, many brands, especially in uh, perfumery and other things that had make a relation, a seduction between two people. That's the second, second creative path that is really very, very useful. What, what else? Mies van der Rohe said that in architecture, less is more. I say that in advertising also, less is more. When I had to make a campaign for the lotto, the lottery, I saw that most of the commercials of the world were showing very rich people with a plane of jewelry, cars, girls, big cigars. And I thought, we have to find another idea to sell the lottery. And I found another very simple idea to tell people that if they won the lottery, something very good will happen to them. One commercial.
it says that you will never listen again if you win the lottery. It's what everybody wants, in fact, not to have to wake up in the morning. So that's to be rich, not to have to wake up in the morning. In fact, creativity, as I said to you before, is doing something different, better, and convert this new way of doing in the standard and the new one. Thank you very much.